To start this werewolf look, I'm using a cool brown eyeshadow on a detail brush to line the wrinkles and shading around the eyes, nose, and forehead. Scrunching up my nose and face like I'm kind of snarling or baring my teeth and furrowing my brow. And I'm also looking at a few werewolf reference photos to help give me a guide for where I want them to be. I'm going in lightly at first and I'm using my finger to blend out or soften the shadows or even wipe them away. And then once I have the placement figured out, darkening the lines a bit more. I was kind of all over the place with this one, struggling with what I really wanted to do, but next I'm using a flat shader brush to pack that color onto the lids and under the eyes to start darkening and sinking the eye area in, and I'm also softly blending it into the wrinkle lines. I'm using that brush to shade along the eye bags as well, and then continuing to create the wrinkles with the detail brush. I want the wrinkles to be the most concentrated and intense right in the center of the face where everything is really scrunched up and expressive and then kind of tapering off as I move out. Just darkening around the inner eye area a bit more here and above the brow bone using a clean fluffy brush to buff that out to lighten and then blend down between the brows as well. I'm adding a few light crow's feet wrinkles to the outer area of the eyes, then still using the same eyeshadow, I'm then contouring the face, starting with the temples and around the forehead, really blending that back into the hairline, then redefining those wrinkles above the brows. I'm also taking that down onto the center of the forehead, creating a soft widow's peak shape, again blending it back into the hairline to darken. Then going back to the detail brush, I'm extending my nostrils out and up slightly so they appear wider and flared. I'm then starting to contour the cheeks, bringing it in a bit further than I normally would, and then really darkening the back of that contour, blending it back onto the ear and down toward the jawline, then under the chin and along the jawline as well. I'm angling those wrinkle lines outside the brows down a bit more toward the center of the face, then creating another light eye bag shadow under the eye. And you can just ignore these lines here, I ended up blending them out later, but I did then shade more in this area between the brows. I added this sharper, more defined contour line, which again, this pretty much got blended out later on. And then the recording stopped, but all I did was line down from the center of the nose down toward the lip, and am now lining around my nose, creating a larger, wider shape. I just kind of wanted to hint at a more dog-shaped nose, but not actually create a full-on new nose and fill it in and everything, just for a more subtle look. And I'm angling the sides up so it follows about the same angle as those nose wrinkles. And for now, I left the center area on the nose blank. For the brows, I'm creating some light feathery strokes coming out from the brows, angling them up and away. I'll be defining these later, so this is just a rough guide. Then I added a third wrinkle above the outside of the brows, again taking it down toward the center of the face. I'm starting to shade under those sharper contour lines I created, still with that cool brown eyeshadow on the flat shader brush. Then I shaded in a few lines and wrinkles around the mouth area as if the mouth were really stretching out, switching to the detail brush to define those lines more. I ended up blending these ones away but then redoing them later because I was just kind of unsure about them, but in the end I did like they added a little something more to this lower area of the face. I'm then adding in a couple more wrinkles to the nose and fading out the ends of the others. Then contouring a bit along the outsides and center of the neck and shading under the nose and lower lip as well. And then more shading along and under the cheek contour, switching to the larger contour brush to blend that down onto the cheeks more. I decided to block out the color of my lips, so I'm applying my concealer over them and just blending that out onto the face and then powdering to set it in place. Then I wanted to add some irritation and redness around the eyes, so I'm using an orangey red eyeliner to line my lower waterline, and I'm using my finger to smudge that out along the lash line. Then going over that with a little bit of a lighter, kind of corally peach eyeshadow to tone it down just a smidge, and I'm blending that along the lash line and the mobile lid. Then tight lining my eyes with that red, and again I'm smudging that up onto the lash line, topping it off with that lighter eyeshadow. I'm applying a bit of that combo to the center of the lips, again using my finger to smudge it out and then applying the lighter shade over top. 
and I got this a little darker than I wanted it, so I'm using my brush with the concealer on it to fade that out even more. Then I'm using a black eyeshadow to darken mainly the inner portion of the lid and eye area, taking it about up to the crease. And then I want a bit of a sharper edge where it's the darkest and deepest at the center, but I am lightly blending that into the wrinkles as well. I'm also using the black on the detail brush now to darken the wrinkle and crease lines, again fading out toward the ends of the lines, keeping the deepest part of the shadow in the center or inner part of each line. Now I'm lining a light shadow along the top center of the nose, softly connecting the lines I created outside the nostrils, and then fading it out a bit with my finger. I'm just finishing up deepening the wrinkles and crease lines. I'm darkening the nostrils with the black as well. Then here I'm just adding those lines in around the mouth again. Still not sure how I feel about them, and actually I kind of felt like E.T. at this point, but that's okay. <laughs> with a clean fluffy brush, I'm gently blending over the wrinkle lines to soften them a bit, and then darkening the contours again. Then with a brown liquid liner with a super fine brush, I'm going over the brows, again very lightly feathering it up and out from the brows, creating very thin hair-like strokes by kind of flicking and lifting that liner up off the skin as I move out, and I'm filling in any gaps in my natural brow hairs as well. I'm creating the longest hairs just below those creases above the outside of the brows and tapering them off toward the tail. Then to kind of help take my natural brows more up in that direction, I'm brushing them up with a clear brow gel. Then I was going to add more hair-like strokes along the cheeks and around the face using the same brown liquid liner, but I decided it would be much more efficient to use a brown cream makeup on this flat duo fiber brush, where the longer hairs are quite sparse and separated, and gently swiping that up and over the cheekbones from under the contours of the cheeks, again lifting up off the skin to create light and wispy ends and I'm blending that out into the brown eyeshadow. You could use a water-activated body paint here as well, which I don't happen to have in a brown right now, so I'm just using a Spirit Halloween cream makeup. I'm applying this around the forehead and down onto that widow's peak, switching to the small detail brush so I can taper that off into the point better. I'm bringing it up from under the jawline and down onto the center of the neck, then forward from the back sides of the neck as well. Once I have all those hair strokes down, I'm going back in with my contour shade, as well as a warmer brown that better matches that cream makeup, and both darkening and blending that contour into the cream. This particular cream makeup does dry down, but if you use like a Makeup Forever flash color or Ben Nye cream color or something similar, you'll need to set those with a powder before blending over them. I'm very lightly blending over the entire face and ears to darken and blend just a tiny bit, and then on the neck I'm taking the makeup all the way down onto my shoulders so it goes all the way underneath the neck of my shirt. And then that's it! The lenses, as always, are from Samhain Contact Lenses, and the fangs from Chaos Custom Fangs, which I will have linked down below. I really hope you enjoyed this more simple look, even though I struggled with it a little bit. I hope it can help some of you guys if you've been wanting to do a werewolf look. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.